Howdy folks, Singin' Toad here, and before I get into the topic of today's video, I just wanted to quickly mention, uh, in my last video I talked about this uh, fantastic little uh, Case and Sons uh, knife, this Ithacus um, uh, Pocket uh, Hunter, uh, being my very first case knife, and I mentioned that, you know, this is, being the fact that it's my first case knife and that I'm not really a case collector and I'm kind of learning about case, um, you know, I didn't know much about them, I still don't, and I'm learning about it, and, you know, I had some very wonderful people uh, genuinely helped me out, left me some nice comments, and gave me some information. And uh, a couple different individuals uh, told me about there's a date code on the uh, on the back of the uh, of the. Um, and of course, the camera does not want to focus. Focus camera, come on. Oh, there we go. Can you see that now? So right there, there's a date code. So it says um, 06 30 20. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's June 30th of 2020 was the manufacture date. And that's super cool. Um, I did not know that. Uh, that is not a super common practice amongst all knife manufacturers. I wish it was. I wish all brands did that. But, um, you know, some brands don't give you any type of uh, date information on their knives whatsoever. And it's a mystery to try and figure it out. And, uh, and you got to go to websites and forums to try and figure out when a knife was manufactured. Some brands like Buck have a mystical code series that you have to decipher on their website. Um, and then, of course, Case puts it right there, which is really nice to see. So that's, that's super awesome. And I got to thank uh, those people who pointed that out to me. And there was a couple different people who pointed that out. And thank you very much. You know who you are. I thank you very much for that. Um, also, um, it was, uh, I think it was Tom from Knife Delights who pointed out uh, that this is actually a vault pattern series uh, knife, which means that um, this is a pattern that they, they they take out of the vault, if you will, and do a, a production run um, for a limited amount of time, and then that design pattern, you know, goes back in the vault, uh, so to say. Uh, making that this knife here extra special, because it's not a super common pattern, um, from my understanding, uh, at least. So... Uh, again, I just want to say thank you to those individuals who gave me the information about the date code and about the uh, the vault pattern. Um, that's that's super awesome. And, you know, uh, I just can't thank the people in this community enough uh, for the kindness, the generosity, and the sharing of information and helping uh, people like myself out, um, you know, greatly. Uh, I thank you very much. So without any further ado, let's get into the topic of today's video. Howdy folks, Singin' Toad here, and thank you very much for watching my video today. I just want to start today's video by saying this is not going to be a formal knife review. This is going to be more of a talking video, so I do apologize. Um, but uh, I just got this knife in, and I want to talk about it. Um, and, uh, you know, before I, I get up into the actual knife, I have to say, tell the story of how I got this knife, where it came from, and all that. Um... A while ago, I want to say roughly a month ago now, um, I was entered into a draw by Tobias Gibson. Uh, he did a giveaway uh, on his channel, uh, and, uh, and I, unbeknownst to me, I didn't even know I was in the draw, uh, but uh, I, I won, won that giveaway. Uh, he was giving away a knife, and now what happened is, you know, he reached out to me uh, and, uh, to say, you know what, I'd won the draw, but he realized that he, this knife might be a problem to try and ship it across the border. Tobias, of course, lives in the United States. I live here in Canada. And he, we both decided that, yeah, it's probably not a smart idea to try and send it across the border, especially right now with the weird CBSA just being weird. Um, it was a better idea not to do that. So he then asked me, um, if I would like to, you know, pick a different winner and then he would come up with something else uh, for me as a consolation prize. So I chose Tom from Knife Delights. And the reason why I chose Tom is because Tom was the very first um, guy, you know, on YouTube to reach out to me uh, and, and, and uh, you know, invite me into this uh, wonderful world of the knife community. Uh, up until that point in time, I really wasn't known by anybody. Uh, my channel ha only had like maybe 100 subscribers. And, you know, like I said, Tom found me somehow, started, you know, leaving nice comments on my videos, and then he emailed me and said, hey, I would like to send you some stickers, and then next thing I know, I was on the RJ's live show, and the rest is history. Uh, and, you know, my channel really exploded. Now, I've obviously had lots of help along the way. There are many great channels uh, who have helped me out and given me shoutouts, you know, and to those folks, you know who you are, I thank you very much. 
Um, but you know, Tom was definitely the um, the spark that started that fire, if you will. So I decided to give that knife uh, to Tom uh, as 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 what uh, Tobias gave me that option for. So then, uh, you know, he reached out to me. Tobias reached out to me and said, you know, I'd like to send you something instead. Um, and what eventually happened is he decided to take it upon himself to contact my favorite uh, Canadian knife uh, supplier, which is Blades Canada. And, you know, he purchased this knife here and then had them ship it to me because uh, they're already in Canada. So, you know, he never had to send a knife across the border. He didn't have to do anything, you know, sketchy. It was all legal, 100% honest to good way of doing it. And I must commend Tobias for, first of all, going above and beyond. Uh, I even told him he didn't have to do this. You know, uh, I was more than happy that that, uh, that the gift or that the prize went to Tom and, and not me. I, I was perfectly fine with just not even receiving any sort of prize whatsoever. Um, but, you know, he was adamant about sending me something. And the fact that he went the extra mile, arranged the Blades Canada to, to have, me send, uh, have them send me this knife, from the bottom of my heart, to Tobias... I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, folks, we talk about the generosity in this community. I don't have the words. I don't have the words to explain it right now. The words are beyond me to explain uh, my gratitude. And, and you know, honestly, thinking outside the box like that to get this knife to me, it, it, it just, I'm so overwhelmed and overjoyed. And I apologize, folks, if I'm getting a little broken up, but I'm just super, super thankful uh, for the kindness of, of, uh, of people like Tobias. So... Folks, if you're not already subscribed to this guy, go check him out. Uh, <laughs> his content is awesome. His Fun Night Friday series with Skip the Show uh, is absolutely entertaining. I get an absolute... Uh, I'm, I'm rolling on the floor laughing with every episode he brings out because he's so clever and funny. Uh, but even his regular content, super good. And he's just super informative, folks. Uh, this guy knows his stuff. So please go check out Tobias. And again, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Uh, I'm very ever grateful. So with all that being said, folks, and I apologize, I know that I've been a little bit long-winded here. Let's go ahead and look at the knife. You're probably saying, show the dang knife, will ya? <laughs> well, gosh darn it, here it is. So it is a combat-ready knife, and they have something kind of cool in the back. Um, so I'm not going to read it out to you, but you can just pause and, and read it here, this little disclaimer on the back. And of course, yes, it is made in China. But there you go. So you can just pause and read that if you like. So that's what this uh, side looks like. So that's the model number CBR341. That's that side, that side, and what's this say? For the world's most demanding defense professionals. There we go. Uh, I'm definitely not a defense professional. I'm a, prof <laughs> I'm a professional idiot, folks. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and open the box. And we have some bubble wrap because everyone's the original fidget toy bubble wrap. So let's go ahead and get that out of here. Uh, do you remember being a kid and sitting there popping this stuff? I do. Anyway, so uh, then of course you got more of the California warning on there. But here we are. Look at this little guy, eh? Now of course it's black, so the camera's probably not showing the best details on it. The action is super stiff. <laughs> it is a flipper knife, but man, uh, that's probably because the pivot is just really tight. And I would imagine Blades Canada probably tightened that pivot down. Um, just to make it so, yeah. Or maybe the, the supplier probably tightened the pivot down before it came across the border. That's probably where that happened. But no problem. I could just take a Torx uh, driver and loosen that up, and I know I'd be able to get that action to free up. But nevertheless, it has thumb studs. But look at that blade, guys. Check that out. So, I don't know if you can read it there, but it does say Kuma. And the model's called the Beast. And then on this side, you do have the model number which says uh, the CBR341 and then China. Uh, from what I understand, this is in the blade steel of OS8, and then of course it has the G10 handle scales. They are nicely milled out and contoured. It is a liner lock, has a pocket clip. Pocket clip is reversible to the other side. And there's some schmutz on there. That's from me though. It has a wicked recurved blade, and then of course this Tonto edge. It's not crazy sharp, but, actually there's a very teeny tiny little neck right there in the blade, but nothing I can actually, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there is just a little teeny tiny neck right there. And that's the way it came out of the box, so 
I left the factory like that, but I'm not being very hard on this knife because one, it's it's a uh, it's a gift knife which I'm ever so thankful for. As they say, folks, never look a gift horse in the mouth. But this is a uh, a cool little knife. <laughs> I tell you what, it's got a little bit of a thumb ramp right there. But you know what? The grooves. So my fingers. I can just slowly do that for you. They fit right in those grooves. And then of course your fingertips land right there. And then of course when you're holding the knife like so, your thumb lands right in there. So, very cool. Now, I showed this knife to my wife and to my uh, my boys uh, when I first got it because I was super excited and words weren't even coming out of my mouth at this point in time. I was just like so uh, excited for it. Um, and right away, my, both my son and my wife, and ironically my brother, I, I took a picture of it and sent it to my brother, they all said the same thing. There's a particular crime fighter who dresses up like a bat. Looks like something this guy would have on his utility belt, now doesn't it? Hey, <laughs> eh? I bet you, I bet you Batman would have something like this in his utility belt. How cool is that, eh? But yeah, that's what my wife and my kid and my brother all said. It looks like a knife Batman would carry. And you know what? By golly, I think he would. I could picture that being something he would have in his utility belt. Very cool. It's got zero blade play. Excellent lockup. It is a liner lock. If I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. I don't rehearse these videos, by the way, folks. I just kind of turn the camera on and start blabbing. It's a very thin pocket clip. It's not super deep carry, so you do have quite a bit of knife sticking out of your pocket. It does have a lanyard hole, but you know what? Despite how you know tactical cool this knife looks, it fits my hand very nicely. You know, I said to Tobias in my email when I thanked him with my return email uh, earlier today. Um, after I'd calmed down, <laughs> I sent him an email that would actually make sense. Um, you know, I, I, I told him how, you know, for the past little while, I've been collecting uh, modern, or uh, sorry, traditional pattern knives, and I haven't really been collecting these type of knives. This, this is more up my alley. You know, I, I tend to gravitate towards, you know, modern day tactical knives. And uh, so this was a, kind of a, a blast in the past for me, if you will, you know. Uh, if I was to take a time machine and go back, you know, about six months ago, this is the type of knife I would have been ordering myself. So, uh, you know, Tobias, you did a great job. You read my mind. And uh, again, I can't thank you enough uh, for the super cool knife. So, uh, for quick uh, size reference, oh, by the way, it has a sharpening choil, which is nice. But the edge is one, two, and about three quarters long, sharpened edge. And if we're counting from the from the end of the uh, handle here, you're about one, two, three. Or hold on a second, I did that wrong. So one, two, three and a quarter. So the sharpened edge. Let me back that up. Is one, two, two and three quarters. Sorry, the sharpened edge is two and three quarters, and uh, three and three and a quarter for the uh, for the full length. So just to give you a quick idea of the size, all torsed construction. This thing's solid. Anyway, folks, maybe I'll do a proper review of this knife down the road. Who knows, maybe it might show up in a fun knife Friday. Or some other open tag that seems that are floating around. Open tags are a great thing to do, folks. I recommend that you take part in them. There are several open tags out there, and they're all fun to participate in. I, I welcome you to participate. But, uh, yeah, very cool. I like it. What do you guys think? Is this a cool knife? I like to know. Perfect centering on the blade. Stands up when you put it down. I like that too. Again, can't thank you enough. Tobias, you're the best. So guys, this is all I have to say about that. Thank you very much, Tobias. I'm Flabbergasted. This is Singing Toad signing out.